All right, Freaker Hunters, let's talk Days Gone. Yeah. I know you love it. Yeah. That raw deal, the open road, Deacon story, the works, and you're all craving more of that post-apocalyptic goodness. Oh, you know it. Yeah. You've come to the right place. We've got 25 games lined up, each one echoing those thrills you're chasing. <laughs> Okay, we're going to need a bigger map for this deep dive. Yeah. Where do we even start? Let's hit the road with games that share that Days Gone DNA, you know? Okay. Big open world, survival on the edge, and stories that stick with you. Music to my ears. <sighs> oh, right. Lay it on me. First up, The Last of Us Part 2. If Deacon and Boozer's Bond hit you right here, get ready for Ellie and Joel's journey. It's brutal, it's beautiful, and those relationships... Man, they'll wreck you in the best way possible. Just like Days Gone, it's about holding on to humanity when everything's trying to rip it away. Okay, that tracks. Both games nail that feeling of we're all we've got in a world gone sideways. Mm -hmm. What's next? Don't tell me, is it time to saddle up? You already know it's Red Dead Redemption 2. Now hear me out. It's cowboys, not bikers, but the soul's the same. That massive open world, the weight of loyalty and betrayal, it's days gone in a Stetson hat. So even though one's fighting freakers in the future and the other's dodging Pinkertons in the past, it's that same gut punch of what would you do for your people? Spot on, and that sense of place, forget about it. Whether you're tearing across the heartland on horseback or carving through the Pacific Northwest on Deacon's bike, exploration is its own reward. I'm digging this. All right, time for a change of scenery. Big time. Horizon Zero Dawn throws you into a future where nature's reclaimed everything, but robotic dinosaurs now rule the roost. Whoa, hold up. Robot dinosaurs. Okay, you have my attention. Mm -hmm. How does that Days Gone feel translate when it's circuits and steel instead of flesh and bone? It's all about strategy. Just like facing a whore, you can't just charge in guns blazing. You gotta learn each machine's weakness, use the environment, craft the right ammo. Right. It's that same Days Gone resourcefulness, but with a sci-fi twist. Okay, I am so down for that. This is why I love a good deep dive, those unexpected connections. What else you got? Let's switch gears to a different kind of intensity. The Walking Dead, season one. This one's all about story, about those gut-wrenching choices that define who you are in a crisis. Oh man, The Walking Dead knows how to twist the knife emotionally. What makes it a top pick for a Days Gone fan? Both games understand that the heart of any apocalypse is the human connection. Remember the weight of saving a stranger knowing resources were tight? Oh yeah. Every decision in The Walking Dead has that same edge, that ripple effect that determines who lives, who dies, and what you're willing to sacrifice. Man, I'm getting chills just thinking about it. All right, so we've got four heavy hitters, each with a different flavor of that Days Gone magic. But what about when you just want to crank things up a notch and unleash some pure post-apocalyptic mayhem? You read my mind. Dying Light is calling. Imagine Days Gone's parkour and combat, but with a day-night cycle, that'll make your heart pound. Oh, I've heard whispers about this one. Daylight, you're the hunter. Nighttime, you're the prey. Right. Exactly. During the day, you've got the freedom to explore, scavenge, and even enjoy the scenery. Yeah. But when the sun sets, well, let's just say those infected get a whole lot faster, a whole lot meaner, and a whole lot more terrifying. <laughs> You'll be thanking your lucky stars for the UV lights you scavenged. Oh, wow. It's that same days gone pressure cooker, but the dial's cranked way up. Dude, that sounds intense. Mm -hmm. Okay, what's next? My trigger finger's getting itchy. Let's head to a world where community is key to survival. State of Decay 2. Remember how satisfying it was to upgrade your camp in Days Gone? Oh yeah. Building up cope and keeping everyone safe? State of Decay 2 is that feeling amplified. You're not just managing resources, you're managing people, each with their own skills, flaws, and drama. Oh man, I could already see the tough decisions piling up. Who gets the last bed? Who goes on the risky supply run? It's that leadership itch scratched in a whole new way. All right, this deep dive is turning into a marathon. What else have we got? Let's trade zombies for zealots and head to Hope County, Montana with Far Cry 5. Imagine the open world of Days Gone, but instead of freakers, you're taking on a whole cult that's taken over. Oh man, I love a good cult takedown. Mm -hmm. What else makes this one sing for Days Gone fans? Two words, customizable, vehicles. Oh. Remember tricking out Deacon's bike? In Far Cry 5, you're souping up cars, trucks, even planes, turning them into weapons against this oppressive regime. It's that same Days Gone feeling of freedom and firepower, but dialed up to 11. Okay, you're speaking my language. One more, hit me. Let's wrap this first leg of the journey with a game that throws you into a world where gasoline and grit are the only currencies that matter. 
Mad Max. Remember scavenging for scrap to keep Deacon's bike running. In Mad Max, you're building a war machine on wheels, piece by brutal piece. Oh man, I can already smell the gasoline and hear the engine roar. This is giving me serious Fury Road vibes, and I'm here for it. It's all about survival in the wasteland, just like days gone, but with a focus on vehicular combat that's unlike anything you've experienced before. Okay, this deep dive is already blowing my mind. We've got bikers, cowboys, robot dinosaurs, Vikings. What other surprises do you have up your sleeve? Buckle up, because we're just getting started. This next batch of games brings the chills, the stealth, and a whole lot of, oh crap, I wasn't prepared for that. You already know I'm a sucker for those heart-pounding moments. Hit me, what's first? Let's head east to the frozen wastelands of Metro Exodus. If exploring those abandoned buildings in days gone sends shivers down your spine, this one's a whole different breed of creepy. Imagine the desolate beauty of the Pacific Northwest, but after a nuclear apocalypse where every breath is a gamble. Okay, now that's how you set the scene. I'm already feeling the chill. <laughs> what else makes Metro Exodus a days gone fan's dream? It's all about atmosphere. You're scavenging for gas mask filters, facing down mutated creatures, making alliances with other survivors, all while wrestling with impossible choices. Just like Deacon navigating the freakers and those morally gray human factions, Metro makes you feel the weight of every bullet, every decision in a world that's barely holding on. Man, I love games that force you to think beyond just pulling the trigger. Mm. What else you got for us in this vein? Let's talk psychological horror, shall we? The Evil Within 2 will take you places you didn't even know existed, and I'm not just talking about the map. Remember those times a horde surprised you in Days Gone? That adrenaline spike of fight or flight? The Evil Within 2 is like that, but instead of freakers, you're dealing with. About. So let's just say you'll never look at a chainsaw the same way again. Dude, I'm both terrified and intrigued. But sometimes, even a post-apocalypse needs a laugh, right? You know me too well. Dead Rising 4 is our palate cleanser, still slaying zombies, but with a wink and a grin this time. If Days Gone is a gritty action drama, Dead Rising 4 is the over-the-top grindhouse zombie flick where you get to craft ludicrous weapons and unleash chaos with a smile. Okay, that sounds like the perfect antidote to a stressful day. From pure horror to zombie slapstick, yeah. this deep dive has it all. And we're just getting warmed up. Next up is a game that takes claustrophobia to a whole new level. Resident Evil 2 Remake. Remember the tension of clearing out an infestation zone in Days Gone? Making sure you had an escape route? Resident Evil 2 takes that feeling, cranks it up to 11, and traps you in a police station overrun by the undead. Oh man, I've heard whispers about this one. Tight corridors, limited ammo, and that relentless tyrant on your tail. This is for those who like their horror up close and personal, huh? You got it. And just like Days Gone, it's about using what you have, whether that's the environment, a well-placed shot, or knowing when to run like hell. Every bullet counts, every corner could mean life or death. All right, I'm officially adding this to my play with the lights on list. What's next? Let's shift gears from pure horror to something a little more meditative. Now hear me out. Death Stranding might seem like an odd fit at first, but bear with me. You play as Sam Porter Bridges, delivering packages in a world shattered by, well, something pretty messed up. Packages. Okay, that doesn't scream days gone yet. <laughs> but I'm listening. It's about the journey, man. Remember that feeling of finally upgrading Deacon's bike, hitting the open road, feeling that sense of freedom? Death Stranding takes that same spirit, the beauty of a world reclaimed by nature, the quiet moments of contemplation. But instead of a bike, you're carefully plotting your route across treacherous terrain, managing your cargo, and avoiding those creepy otherworldly entities. It's a slow burn, but man, it gets under your skin. Okay, you've officially piqued my curiosity. I'm all about those unexpected connections. And speaking of unexpected, let's head back in time to the Viking Age with Assassin's Creed Valhalla. Now, you're probably thinking, what do Vikings have to do with Freakers? But trust me on this one. Right, you've earned my trust by now. Lay it on me. Remember the feeling of building up Cope's camp in days gone, becoming a leader, establishing a place for your people in a world gone mad. That's the core of Valhalla. You're not just raiding and pillaging, you're establishing a settlement, making alliances, crafting a future for your clan in this harsh new land. It's that same days gone feeling of responsibility, of carving out your own piece of hope in a world that desperately needs it. 
Okay, I never thought I'd be this hyped for a Viking simulator. This is why I love deep dives. We've gone from claustrophobic horror to rebuilding society, one package or axe swing at a time. What else have you got hidden in those deep dive archives of yours? Get ready for some curveballs, my friend, because this last batch is all about those games that might not scream days gone on the surface, but trust me, they've got that special something you're looking for. All right, I'm always down for a good surprise. Hit me with your best shot. Let's kick things off with a classic. Left 4 Dead 2. Yeah, yeah, I know. More zombies. Uh -huh. But hear me out. If the horde fights in Days Gone got your blood pumping, Left 4 Dead 2 is going to blow the doors off that experience. Left 4 Dead 2? Dude, that game is legendary. Yeah. What makes it a must-play for a Days Gone fan? It's all about surviving against overwhelming odds, just like those desperate scrambles through hordes you know and love. But this time, you've got a team of friends watching your back. You'll be mowing down hordes of the undead, each with their own nasty surprises. And let me tell you, coordinating a last second escape with a tank hot on your heels is a special kind of thrill. Oh man, I can only imagine. Those special infected always spell chaos. <laughs> okay, Left 4 Dead 2, definitely adding that to the list. Mm -hmm. What else you got? Get ready to die a lot and love every minute of it with Sekiro, Shadows Die Twice. Now this one's a tough one to compare directly to Days Gone. No open world, no hordes. But that feeling of mastering combat, of learning enemy patterns and executing the perfect counter, it's Days Gone distilled into every encounter. Sekiro has a reputation for being brutally hard but fair, right? Like you earn every victory. Exactly. You play as a shinobi, the one-armed wolf, and let me tell you, that one arm gets a serious workout. You'll be deflecting swords, using your grappling hook to outmaneuver enemies, and learning to exploit every opening. It's that same days gone satisfaction of becoming a total badass, but with a samurai twist. Okay, I'm always up for a challenge, especially when the reward is being a total badass. Speaking of badasses, let's talk orcs. Middle Earth, Shadow of War. Now stay with me on this one. Okay. Remember how Days Gone made those human encounters so memorable? Like you take down a ripper and they might come back later with a grudge. Shadow of War takes that to a whole other level. Wait, really? Tell me more. It's called the Nemesis system. Every orc you fight, every encounter, it's all connected. You might humiliate an orc captain in battle and he'll come back later with a nasty scar and a burning desire for revenge. Or you might be ambushed by a rival who remembers that headshot you landed a week ago. It makes the world feel alive, constantly reacting to your choices. Dude, that is so cool. That's the kind of dynamic storytelling I live for. Right. It's that days gone feeling of consequence amplified. Okay. Shadow of War added. What else you got? Let's get weird with control. Now, if you thought fighting freakers was strange, buckle up. This one throws you into a world of paranormal phenomena, government conspiracies, and a secret agency where... Well, let's just say the laws of physics take a break. Oh, okay, this took a turn. I'm intrigued though. How does this connect back to the Days Gone experience? Both games nail that feeling of being thrown into the deep end, forced to adapt and survive against overwhelming odds. In Control, you're this woman who stumbles into a secret agency just as all hell breaks loose, and you're the only one who can stop it. Plus, you get these crazy telekinetic powers that are a blast to use in combat. It's that same blend of action and intrigue that makes Days Gone so addictive. Okay, I'm sold. Control it is. Now for something a little more grounded. Remember that feeling of exploring the wilderness in Days Gone, scavenging for supplies and pushing your survival skills to the limit? Shadow of the Tomb Raider delivers that in spades. Oh, I can totally see it. Right. Lara Croft knows a thing or two about surviving in hostile territory. Exactly. You'll be raiding tombs, navigating treacherous jungles, and facing off against a secret organization that's up to no good. Plus, it's got a surprisingly emotional story that explores Lara's past and the consequences of her actions. Kind of reminds me of Deacon wrestling with his own past. Okay. Shadow of the Tomb Raider is going straight to the top of my playlist. Sure. And with that, we're down to our last recommendation. I can't believe we've covered this much ground already. What's the grand finale? We're ending this deep dive with a descent into gothic horror, my friend. Bloodborne. This one's notorious for its difficulty, but man, the reward is worth every death. Bloodborne, huh? I've heard tales. It's something about werewolves and eldritch abominations. You're not wrong. It's a game that gets under your skin and stays there. And you know what? At its core, it shares that same days gone spirit of facing down terrifying enemies in a world on the brink. Okay, I'm ready to face my fears. What makes Bloodborne so special, even for someone coming from a completely different type of game, like Days Gone? Atmosphere. Pure, unadulterated atmosphere. 
Remember how Days Gone nailed that feeling of a world ravaged by something terrible but still beautiful in its own way? Bloodborne does that with gothic horror. You're thrown into this city consumed by a curse, with these haunting environments and creatures that'll make you question your sanity. It's a masterpiece of tension and dread, and if you can handle the heat, it's an experience you won't soon forget. Man, you are not kidding about saving the best for last. This deep dive has been incredible. I'm walking away with a whole new appreciation for the post-apocalyptic genre, and I've got a playlist a mile long. That's what it's all about. We've gone from bikers to cowboys, robot dinosaurs to Vikings and everything in between. It just goes to show that no matter what flavor of post-apocalyptic adventure you're craving, there's a game out there waiting to scratch that itch. So to our listeners out there, the real question is, where will your next adventure take you? Thanks for joining us on this epic deep dive. And until next time, happy gaming.